Um, pleasure to be here and uh, I say welcome to Campus Europe in Lund. Uh, this is a new stronghold in Medicon Valley with uh, Medicon Village, with uh, Max4 and ESS so, uh, located around Lund University and with Copenhagen as an important part of this. Uh, so I will explain a little bit about the new investments we are doing. And before I do that, I would like to give you my favorite explanations why investment in knowledge is so important. You know it, but I use that to, ex to convince people who are political decision makers and business people. And the first is George Bernard Shaw, who has written that if you have an apple and I have an apple and we exchange these apples, then you and I will still each have one apple. But if you have an idea, and I have an idea, and we exchange these ideas, then each of us will have two ideas. That is growth strategies. And there's another one, Paul Romer, famous uh, US economist. I guess that he will soon get the Nobel Prize. He has written, while capital and labor are rival goods, knowledge is a non-rival good. Knowledge can be used by any number of persons at the same time. That's part of the new growth um, theories and um, is important to explain why investment in knowledge, in research and development is so important. So, Lund University, Anna has already talked about that. It's one of Sweden's two oldest universities. We'll celebrate 350 years in a few years' time. It's a comprehensive university with eight faculties. We have everything from art, theology, to technology, medicine, and natural science. Uh, we have a number of research centers, about 40,000 students, 800 million euros in revenues. And it's home for Medicon Village, Max4, and ESS. So here is Medicon Village, the first of the new elements of Lund. Uh, this is AstraZeneca premises. We took it over in January and it will be established now in 2012 to 14. And the basic idea for the concept is the whole value change from basic research to products to for the market. It is not a research institute, it is not a science park, it's everything. It's a whole value chain. And it's included center of excellence for cancer research an expanded bio-incubator, uh, a life science foresight institute, already funded by, the, by EU money, a science support center, which means that enterprises and researchers who are in the uh, medical village, they will access to uh, infrastructures in the university and the new uh, elements that we are building, like uh, MAX4. Uh, there is uh, a number of life science enterprises, negotiations going on with enterprises now to uh, establish in the new premises. Uh, this um, Medicon village is based on a private donation by, by Mats Persson, a um, successful business person who started a construction company, Piab, and he donated 100 million Swedish crowns for this. And uh, we are working with him and with a network of funds and banks and other institutions in the medical investment partners to, to guarantee a success for this project. This is the next one, Max4 Laboratory. It's a Swedish Nordic synchrotron light facility and it will be built and ready by 2015. It's for life science and material science it will be the most powerful facility in the world. They are the, the best star today in Oxford. It's in US and it's in Germany, in Hamburg. This will be uh, the next one and it will be a um, um, step, step forward as close to the, um, to the margin that you ever can come in this technology. It's an investment cost of around 300 million uh, euros and it's funded by national and regional public and private funds. Ongoing negotiations with Denmark, Norway, Finland and Estonia in partnership with Poland. They will build a new facility in Krakow, so people from Krakow are here to learn how to build this. This is an important 
uh, instrument for life science. Today, about 70% of the time used in the present um, Max Lab is for life science research. So this is a picture from uh, noon yesterday from the site where construction work is going on. It's rather impressive. Uh, the um, uh, it started last year and is now will be ready by 2014, 2015. So here is the third new facility, European Spallation Source, a neutron scattering facility for life science and material science. And it's supported by 17 governments and will be hosted by Sweden and Denmark together. And in Denmark, in Copenhagen, we will establish the Data Management Center, the Bohr Institute. The investment cost of this is about 1.4 billion euros. Design update is going on, construction 2013 to 2019. Then it will start operate. Uh, it will not be completely completed until about 2025, when the last few instruments will be installed. So these are heavy in investments to serve science and uh, life science in the future. Let me now explain why we do this. And here is a picture about how science is serving society. Some examples of breakthroughs during the last 20, 30 years. People in the street, all of them have a relation to this sort of science. And you will see that from this picture. Let's say this is uh, um, an uh, animation made by German scientists. Uh, if you start up to the left, you see the man, he has a pacemaker and pacemaker includes batteries and batteries can have been uh, uh, changed. They are smaller, they will last longer and that is an important part of it, the improvement for people with pacemakers. You see the car with functional materials in the GPS the airbag. The man in the middle, he has optical materials in his sunglasses. He has artificial hips with biocompatible materials. The lady in blue, cosmetics, it's a lot of nanoparticles, a lot of science behind it. The man to the right, he has artificial lens, biocompatible polymers. And then you see all the IT equipment, the digital camera, the uh, uh, conduct, semiconductor for the uh, watch, uh, the credit card, the display, the red, uh, red hair, head for the computer and then uh, light materials in bikes and uh, new structures in mobile phones. So everything that we talked about as information and communication technology, and most of it, is an application of basic material science breakthroughs. And this is what we have done. This is now normal things for us today, part of normal life. But in the next 20, 30 years, there will be a great number of breakthroughs. And here is a way of illustrating what the scientists are thinking about for the next 20, 30 years. It's about energy, climate, environment, new materials, health, uh, medicines, uh, for example. Uh, it's about everyday chemistry, about um, paints, cleaning, uh, and so on. So a number of things that are important for our daily life will be changed, will be further developed. And this is why we need this sort of, of, of equipment. So here is Campus Europe. Now I will end by this picture and give, bringing you to the vision of 2020 plus with the Lund University, Medicon Village, Max 4 and ESS all on place. But in between we are planning for the next step which is Campus Europe with a cluster of life science, material science innovation centers and a big visitor centers for people who would like to understand what's going on here but also in the rest of the university. So this is a, both a reality in what we are investing and a vision of the next step. So welcome to Lund. Things will happen here. Thank you very much. <laughs> when I hear this story I, I wonder how many years have you been working with this project? A few years. Well, I can say that the first, um, for the ESS, which is a big thing, that started in October 2000, with scientists from Denmark, Norway, and Sweden coming together in Lund to agree on a site in Scandinavia where this could be built. 
and they agreed that Lund would be the best. I think the Danes found that Lund is very comfortable for Copenhagen. Uh, and um, to launch a campaign uh, and challenge the three countries who always had taken the big things, Germany, France, and UK. So that was the start of it. And it took uh, nine years before we had an agreement between ministers of research from uh, some te ten countries that Lund is the, uh, the place that they would like to invest in. So nine years and nine quite years. so many hours. Yeah. And if you look at this 2020, we are now 2012. So we are looking now because we know this will happen. But after 2020, it's still open. So someone has to write the manuscript and conduct the play. And that is what we are going to do. So we'll see that we will fill this with something very attractive for scientists and for business. And the scientists, are they queuing up now? Uh, uh, for the AstraZeneca or the Me American Village, yes, there's a great number of them. We have, when we moved into it in uh, January, uh, AstraZeneca had about 1,000 people working there. When we moved in, there were contracts with different uh, operations, companies, uh, university, on 600 places. And we are now filling up this. So I will say by uh, a year or two, it's fill, full, and then we'll have to start to build new uh, buildings there. Good. That's very optimistic. Thank you very much. Yeah, you. Any more questions for Alan Svensson? No, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.